Welcome to our review on electrons and the periodic table. So first thing we need to remember here are the key scientists involved in developing the periodic table itself. And there are three you've got to remember for your exam. So the first one is the scientist called De Bruyne. Now what he actually did was he noticed that these certain elements that had certain properties in common could be organized into little groups of three, which he called triads. So that was his first version of this periodic table. Then we had a scientist called Newlands, and what he actually did was he classified elements according to his law of octaves. So what that actually meant was that elements with similar properties appeared in the same row on his periodic table. The third scientist is one called Mendeleev, and he's the one we still use a version of the table of today. So what he actually did was he decided to arrange the elements in order of relative atomic mass. But when he looked at it, he decided some of them would be better in a slightly different order. So he swapped some elements around and then he also left gaps on his periodic table for elements that he thought were yet to be discovered. So with Mendeleev's periodic table then, he had these gaps because he thought there were elements that were undiscovered, but in those gaps, he actually predicted the properties that they would have. So what he actually had on his periodic table was he had a gap where today we find gallium, and he called it Eka aluminium. And he predicted that the atomic mass would be about 68. It would have a low melting point. It would have a density of around about six grams per centimeter cubed, and it would have a formula when it's joined with oxygen of Ea2O3. And today, if we have a look at gallium, which is taking that place on his periodic table, then its atomic mass is 70. It's got a melting point of 30 degrees Celsius, which is low. Its density is 5.9 grams per centimeter cubed. And the formula of its oxide is Ga2O3. So you can see just how close he was in terms of his predictions from his periodic table, even though these elements hadn't been discovered yet. An example of two of these elements that Mendeleev decided he was going to swap around are iodine and tellurium. So what he actually worked out was that iodine would be better if it was in the group with chlorine and bromine. So he swapped it to that position. And then in 1913, another scientist called Mosley actually discovered how to measure the atomic numbers. And he saw that tellurium was actually 52 and iodine was 53. So even though Mendeleev didn't realize this, he'd carried out the correct swap there. So even though atomic numbers weren't measured in those days, he knew that iodine fit better with chlorine and bromine than tellurium did, so he swapped it. When we actually look at the periodic table today, you'll see that the elements are actually arranged in order of their increasing atomic number. So if you start with hydrogen with the atomic number of one, you go across to helium, then back to lithium is three, beryllium's four, boron's five, and so on. So you start in the top left, working across left to right, and working your way down, and that is in order of increasing atomic number. And remember, there are these two key features on our periodic table. The horizontal rows, known as the periods, and the vertical columns are known as the groups. Now the electronic structure then is the way that the electrons are arranged in the atom. So when we have a look at three of them here, we've got lithium, sodium, and potassium, which are all found in group one of the periodic table, the alkali metals. So if we look at their electronic structures, we can see lithium has one electron in its outer shell, sodium has one electron in the outer shell, and potassium has one electron in its outer shell. So what we can actually say is that the number of electrons present in the outer shell of a particular atom tells you the group number as well. So if it's got one electron in its outer shell, it's in group one. If it has six electrons in its outer shell, it will be in group six. Finally, we just need to remember that when we're looking at the period, then that will be the same as the amount of numbers in the electronic structure. So if we have a look at lithium, for example, because its electronic structure is 2.1, then we've got two numbers there, which tells us it's in period two. Sodium, which has 2.8.1, is going to be in period three, because there are the three numbers there. Potassium, 2.8.8.1, four numbers, it's gonna be in the fourth period.